El Camino. Welcome back to the channel where we make extremely poor financial decisions. What I have behind me here is a 1970 El Camino. Could be wrong, I don't know a lot about these. Um, I'm from Australia, these things are very rare in Australia. This is an American car, it's still left-hand drive and it's pretty awesome. I'm a big fan of the American cars, they're big, they're tough and they look so damn good. This is a complete barn find, covered in moss, disgusting, full of water, full of leaves. It's, it's what really gets me going. If you look at a car like this and you don't get excited, I don't know what is wrong with you. So she's got the small block Chevy in it. I, I don't know a lot of the specs because I, I simply just seen this car and had to have it. I, I did not even look at it. I was looking at another car on that one morning I was just driving to work and come across it. This car was actually in the back behind everything. And I'm gonna be honest, I know nothing about this car. From what I've been told, it's a 1970. It's got a small block. I don't know the numbers of the motor. Probably, it looks pretty hotted up. Someone spent a lot of time on this back when it was a runner driver. What I can tell just by a quick glance of looking at the motor, I dare say she's gonna have some water in it. Considering the fact that there's a big scoop on the top that was just open to the elements, water's definitely got down the carbies and made its way into the motor. So we're gonna have to check that out first. I've held off looking at this thing just so I can like bring it across on camera of what I'm looking at and how I feel about the whole thing. So I think the first thing we're gonna do is probably check the motor, see if it spins. Hopefully it still spins just a little bit so that way we can, I don't know, get it running. I, I have very low hopes that this thing is actually gonna turn over. But if that's the case, I think we'll just jump straight into giving it a good bath, cleaning it all out, making it look good again and then we're gonna have to sort out the motor. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll put a breaker bar on the, on the front of the motor and we'll see if it spins. Well, that's loose. Is that loose? Or is that? Oh no. Oh no. So you gotta be careful when you're dealing with this stuff because that's only, that's only a really small bolt. And I first put that on there and thought it was loose, but I think it's just stripped. That's not a good start. All right, well that puts a spanner in the works. Maybe we can... Oh, that really screws things up. Oh, oh she pretty locked up, boys. It's not even remotely moving. So I'd, I dare say that this has been a problem before and someone's tried to turn it over from that bolt and then didn't even realize that it wasn't spinning and then they just broke the bolt in the crank. Just sucks, but that is proper, locked up. Oh, that sucks. So our first attempt at working on the new car has just been kicked in the butt. So I was hoping that it would have a little bit of movement, but considering that harmonic balancer bolt has just been completely stripped, I dare say it's been locked up and then someone's tried to move it and just stripped it clean off. So I even tried spinning it from the fan belts, but yeah, it's usually you'll just get a little bit of movement if they're not locked up but that is proper, proper locked up. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna pull the plugs out and then we're gonna use the bore scope and then we're just gonna have a look and see how, how full our pots are. Hopefully it's not as bad as I think it's gonna be. Fingers crossed. Well, it's not too bad. That's the first one. Second one, not bad. Oh, that's not good. It's so the one in the back, left-hand side. It's a little bit corroded. Not psycho corroded, which is good, but still corroded. 
I've also noticed there's a crack in the header pipe. And a funny thing, I've, I don't think I've actually ever worked on a V8. I've always had sixes. Well, that's a bit corroded too. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna move on to the other side now and have a look. The ones, looking at the spark plugs, they're actually not that bad on that side. So maybe on this side, they're gonna be really bad. The thing that's got me worried is if it was like a shit box, four cylinder that you're only driving carefully and all the other shit, but because this motor looks like it, it does what it's meant to do, that one's not too bad. Like with it being seized and then copying a flogging, it's, it's probably not gonna last very long. So I dare say this is gonna be a motor out jobby. Pull it down, make sure it's working right, make sure everything's clean because it did sit for so long, so you don't know how badly it's gunked up on the inside. But like I said, if it was like a, a shit box, you wouldn't care, I wouldn't care. But because this is like a pretty cool race car in a sense, you, there's a lot less, less room for error. No, it's looking good. It's looking really good actually. Spark plugs aren't too bad. The fact that I'm gonna get bitten by a redback spider probably is. Feel my knuckles get it hit. <laughs> Haven't done it yet, but I feel it. I feel it coming. So this car looks like it was very loved back in the day. Obviously not too bad. This is this is going better than I thought it was gonna go. Where's the other plug? God they're in the worst spot. You can go over there. I'll figure out where you go later. Uh, that one doesn't look too flash. I couldn't get a good shot of the old bore scope, but from what I can see, there is not a lot of gunk in there. It's not completely rusted out. There is, like I said, a little bit of moisture, but I can still see the cross hatching on the on the cylinder walls, and like it's like the tiniest bit. Put it this way: the camera head on the bore scope wasn't getting wet when I was putting it in there, which is great. Uh, check the oil. There's actually no oil in it. I don't know why. So pretty much I'm gonna fill up the cylinders with automatic transmission fluid and then let it sit and then pretty much the next thing I wanna do is just completely wash this thing and make it look shiny. I can already see that I need to pull off the headers and weld the headers just for the simple fact is there is a crack on the last one. But other than that, like the, the carbies seem to be free. I get a couple of rebuild kits for the carbies. And yeah, she just needs a good clean and I reckon she's a goer. It's gonna be so good. So we got all our pots soaking in automatic transmission fluid so that way it, hopefully it frees it up. So in the meantime, while we wait for that to do its job, I'm gonna give it a wash. This is something I've been, like from the moment I've seen it, I thought I wanna wash this thing. We're gonna get in, give it a wash, see if we can scrub it up nicely, get some shine out of it. And yeah, whew, I'm so keen.
grease. So she's been soaking while we've done that clean. Let's see if we can get a bit of movement out of her. Up. All right, so we're not having much luck with um, going off the harmonic balance or the or the fan belt, really. But um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jack it up, put it on some on some stands, and then hopefully we can get it on the flywheel and maybe move it that way. I've had cars in the past that they don't want to move off the um, harmonic balancer, but they'll move a little bit off that. You can just work them back and forth, and then eventually you get it free. So same thing happened with the little Susie. So we got that thing free, that was fully locked up. We were dragging that thing down the road and it wouldn't move. But just keep working that flywheel and then you eventually get them free. So judging from the bore scope, it's not that bad. So hopefully by just moving it, we're just gonna free it up that little bit and then I'll wind it over a few times while the flywheel and then we'll have another look at the bore scope, make sure there's no pitting or like ridges where the rings were sitting for so long with moisture on them. Boys, you should go in handheld mode. So I got him up on the jack stands. Um, threw them under, just so, they're not gonna fail, but I don't know. I don't like low cars for this reason. I don't feel safe. But I did find something pretty interesting when I first poked my head under here, which is quite funny, actually. I dare say they had an oil leak at one point. So there's a, there's a wood screw in the bottom. So that explains why there's no oil in it. Because I doubt that little sucker there was sealing anything. So that's quite funny. And also, I wasn't I don't know anything about these cars, but that says Turbo 350. So I'm guessing that's what it is, but I don't know. Could be it, could not be it. And these headers are quite interesting. Well done. A few bottom mounts, but should be right. And no rust under here, I have found, which is really, really good. So, great news is I don't have to pull the starter motor off to get the flywheel because the dust cover's gone. So I might just leave her off the extractors and see how it goes and then we will go from there. Let's have a look, see. I know why the uh, extractors are cracked. Because there's, those exhausts are just floating. So that whole extractor system is holding the whole length of exhaust pipe up because they don't go all the way to the back of the car, which is brilliant. So we have to do something about that. Um, I really regret washing it right now because now I'm getting dripped on. Oh, it's all part of the fun, isn't it? All right, how are we gonna get a good lever on this? Uh, what are we gonna do? I need a hoist. Anyone want to donate a hoist? That'd be great. Oh, I'm getting sick of doing it on the ground. I'm now at the age where I can say, I'm too old for this. There's nothing to lever off. Usually, you can get in where the starter motor is and lever it from there, but... Damn V8s. There's exhaust on each side. Oh. I'm gonna keep going. Check back in later. No joke, I may have some good news. Mm. Please, oh please. Will you stay in there for me? I need, I need all use just to hold the camera so it doesn't fall. You tell me if that moves. Alright. Ready? Don't drop my camera. Did it move? I'm gonna go back and watch the footage. Oh, I tell you what, that is such a relief. I'm, I'm the only one here, I'm actually talking to you and I'm telling you, tell me if it moved. Because I can't see, I'm underneath the car. But it, it's moving from the flywheel, so I'm sure it was moving at the front. Went back and watched it and sure enough, she's moving, which is awesome. So now we just need to keep working at it, keep moving it back and forwards, and hopefully free it up and there's no like hard spots or anything. And then once we do that, I'll put some more oil in it, let it soak for a bit longer, because it's been soaking for about two hours now, because that's how long I took to wash the car and everything, so 
I'm hoping that it's a matter of keep doing this. Look, I'm shaking. This is brilliant. So I'm, I'm hoping it's just a matter of keep doing this and then we're gonna hopefully get it winding over from the starter motor. Obviously I'm gonna put some oil in it and all the other stuff. Um, yeah, no, I'm so excited. This is so good. So I'm gonna keep working at it. I'm gonna come back when we can just sit there and spin it by hand. But like I said, I'm pretty sure this motor still needs to come out so that way we can tidy it up. Well, we can do it all in there, but those headers definitely need to come off. They're welded pretty much from the head all the way back, so. Um, I need to re-tap the harmonic balancer bolt because that's stripped. So I dare say someone's had a go at doing this before and then broke it and given up. So I wish they didn't because that's just another job that adds to the list. But I'm really hoping that this is all going to go really well. No word of a lie, I think we've had a win. I think we've had an absolute win. Look at that. Look at that. Yes. Yes. She Dobby is free! Master has given Dobby a smack with a hammer! And now Dobby is free! Yes! Yes! That is so good. That is so good. Oh, can I get over that? I thought this thing was locked up for sure. That thing, that air intake, is not watertight. It's just been sitting in there in the rain for I don't know how many years. And it, it just freed up. That was not moving this morning. That is so good. Yes! Whew, I'm going to go cool down. Uh, be back in a minute because it's bloody hot outside. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to have a beer. I know I said I was going to have a beer, but I'm, I'm just too excited. I'm, I'm sorry. So, before I do anything else, I'm going to see if there's any oil or water in the sump. I checked the dipstick and I couldn't see any oil. You never know. Oh, there's oil. Okay, okay. You can put some oil in the old girl. Oh. Something's better than none, I guess. Now, I'm sure this motor takes a special oil or something like that, but I have this saying, some oil is better than no oil, so you don't have to get over it. There we go, now we're showing oil. Ah. Alright, so something I've done already, got the old top done jump pack, kicker in the guts, boost. Stuff spinning. Ah. Okay, I'm gonna have to look into that. The gauge probably doesn't even work. But that's a win. That is such a win. We got oil in the dipstick. It's spinning over free. It doesn't sound like it's clunking anywhere. That is absolutely brilliant. Oh man, I'm so excited. So I think I'm gonna. I don't know. What am I gonna do? Well, we might. We might see if it runs. Might see if we can get a pop out of it. That'll be bloody awesome. So we'll hook up. I noticed the um, coil pack is disconnected. The wires are hanging down. So let's need to figure out where they go, which is pretty obvious. It's got a positive and negative on it. And then, yeah, we'll see if we got spark. This thing's got a um, MSD ignition in the back. Or MSD bloody distributor. So surely they're pretty reliable and maybe we can get a pop out of this thing. That'll be good. Oh, I can't wait. I just sat down, had a look at it, done some research. Um, my battery went flat, my little jump starter went flat. So I put the battery on the charger power supply just so I can do some diagnostics. And I found I didn't have any power to the coil. So with the MSD ignitions and distributors, you have this plug here. So that plug there, which plugs into the bottom of that. And you can short this out and then simulate a rotation then you just put a screwdriver in the end of this and then you can simulate a spark. So I went through all that, trying to figure out why the hell there was no power. And then I come down to back here and found a loop of wires and they went into these suckers right here, which is speaker wire. And if you look, if the camera will focus, you can't really see it, but see how corroded they are? So I was only getting like four volts to the MSD box. 
So I was like, why the hell is that? And the ignition on this is really weird. So as soon as you turn the key, it's starter mode is engaged. There's like no ignition. So I'm thinking, there's gotta be a switch. So I come and sat in the car for ages trying to figure out where the hell would someone put a switch? I've seen this switch here, but this is for the fans. So that's a fan switch, which is good to know. I'm under the dash looking, found a rat's nest and a rat's nest of wires. But then I seen the speaker wire coming through the firewall. So I followed that along, followed it down, and then it was in the kick panel. Pulled the kick panel out. Here's that wire. Wire, wire, wire. I'm like, oh, where's that go? I'm like, hang on, what the hell is that? Ah, there's our switch. So that's the ignition switch. Flick it on, which is hidden behind the seat. And then that will put power to the thing. I'm going to correct myself. Um, I found that switch and then I went and tested it. It only had four volts. Then I found the problem was those speaker wires was that corroded that it wasn't bringing any power back. So I found it, cut the wire coming out. This one goes to the battery. This one goes in the MSD box. And there's power, earth in the big wires. And then you have your orange and your black for your coil. And then there's another wire that's meant to go to your ignition, but they've just simply turned off the whole unit, which works. So I figured that part out and then I tested it again. And lo and behold, we have spark. And then my battery went flat and my charge is not keeping up. So I'm going to get another battery and then we'll um, put some fuel in down there and maybe rig up a temporary fuel system with something. And we're going to see if this thing fires. It spins over nicely. Doesn't sound like it's doing anything weird. So we're just going to see if we can get a couple of pops out of it. See if it'll sit there and idle. And if that's the case, we have won, boys. We have absolutely won. And man, it's been a long day. It's been like an emotional roller coaster. I've been like, yay, El Camino. Ah, oh, it's seized. Yay, it spins. Ah, oh, it's not all the electricity shit's a mess. Oh. Tell you what i'm gonna have a good sleep tonight but what would top it off if this thing just popped right off and went like i'm very hopeful and i don't know if you just tinker with them long enough that's what they do unless there's something completely wrong inside this motor it's gonna work i can see it everything all the all the life signs are there so we're gonna have an el camino boys. i believe i've got all the ducks in a row so we're just gonna see if it actually fires up, I'm so nervous. This thing was seized this morning and we're gonna give it a go. So I'm gonna put a bit of fuel down the um, down the throat holes. and we'll see if we can get it going. All right, moment of truth. Um. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Round two. Part two. Part two. It did stuff. Oh, no way. I thought you had her there for a second. I thought I did too. I'm shaking. Oh, it's gone. That's amazing. It popped and stuff. It almost blew up. No, that's normal. <laughs> that's normal. Holy hell, I'm shaking like crazy. 
give it a little bit more. See if it wants to turn on. I don't think my battery likes me anymore. Oh, but that is a win. That is a massive win. Holy hell. I can't express how excited I am about that. This thing was like completely locked up this morning and now it's popping and making the right noises, but it's not running quite right. So either when I put the plugs back on, I either put them in the wrong order or something. That's why we got the spit out the bloody carburetor. But I don't know what to say. It's just amazing. So I think I'm just going to tinker with it for a bit longer. We'll sort out the plugs, make sure I got them in the right spot. Uh, rig up maybe a temporary fuel system so that way it can keep running once it starts because right now I'm just putting a bit of fuel down the um, carburetors. And hopefully we can get this thing running and see if it drives forward or backwards. And then we'll get into all the other stuff now, but I just want to know if it drives forward or backwards and it sits there, runs and idles and does all the other stuff. Oh my God, I can't believe that. I can't believe it. Like I had high hopes. I really had high hopes. But like there wasn't even what five one minute of winding over and it already wanted to run. She wants to run. She wants to run. Alright, I'm gonna do some more research, make sure I got the plugs in the right spot, and we'll we'll try again. We'll try again. Alright, so it turns out it wasn't as wrong as I thought I was. It turns out I wasn't as wrong as I thought I was, I was just looking at the wrong diagram. So I had two plugs mixed up. So we'll put it back together and then we'll see if it works. Oh, that's so close. That's so close. And we got oil pressure too. Must have something to do with the ignition switch that was turned off when we tried the first time. Holy hell. Bit more, bit more. I lost count of what time this is. Now I've got a little um, fuel tank rigged up down the bottom, but just that little run then took all of it. So I readjusted the hose and we'll see if we can get it going once more. Fingers crossed. out of fuel but oh my god we did it Yay. that is mint I had the little fuel jerry thing hooked up down there oh that is insane I gotta go I gotta go lay down it's too much all right so I rigged up a new little fuel tank let's see if we can give it a bit of a run before we change the oil Okay. Stored it. Oh, this 
Thanks, Jeff. Shampoo? <laughs> that is so good. We have wicked oil pressure. Ah, oh, I better turn the fans off. That is so good. Oh my god. This morning, I did not think this car was a runner. It was, it was fully locked up. That bolt's still broken in the harmonic balancer, which I'm going to have to do something about. It's probably fallen off by now. But man, that is unbelievable. It was locked up like. I had to put all my force on it back and forwards trying to get it free and she freed up and I would have spun it about 200 times to make sure it wasn't binding anywhere. But that is so good. So I dare say this will be it for this episode. Um, if you haven't yet, make sure you like and follow and do all that crap. It really helps the channel. It's been struggling a bit lately to be honest and to the boys that watch it all the way to the end, I really appreciate that. That's what helps me out. It's what keeps it moving, keeps it ticking along. So I really appreciate it and yeah, if you watch it all the way end, it's just better monetization on YouTube. Helps me pay for dumb shit like this. So make sure you do. And this thing isn't the end goal. This is this is a surprise I want to give you. I'm not keeping this car. This car is just a stepping stone to what I actually want. So my end goal is actually a charger. So once <laughs> we just we just gotta flip a few cars, man. And I thought Starting with American cars is probably the best way to go. Everyone wants one of these nowadays, so we'll grab a few, we'll fix a few, we'll fix them up, and we'll get them running, moving, driving, and then we'll move on to the next one. We'll keep it rolling. Don't tell my wife. But yeah, like I said, that's the end of this video. We'll um, get some oil, get some friggin', get it on some jack stands, do the automatic transmission, give that a flush, clean it all out, probably re-kit the carby so it sits there and idles properly, but she's a runner, she's a runner. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See you in the next one.